All right, guys, welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. Today, uh, we just finished our small game hunt here with backcountry hunters and anglers. And you guys may have heard about this guy on Facebook. He had a crazy situation happen to him here in JW Corbett, where he actually was attacked by a gator while he was out hunting. And really the point of this episode is uh, for him to tell his story so that you guys can get the truth about what exactly happened out here. chance to win both of these shirts for free all you have to do is make sure that you're subscribed to our channel and if you want to get more entries into this raffle just click right here to get more info about the raffle i'm james boyce i live right here in palm beach gardens i've hunted corbett for about 15 years straight I hunted florida for about 33 years um, it was just like any other day you know go out for a hunt i had my son with me the first day November 9th, and I had my wife with me, and I said, well, it's raining a little bit. I said, well, we'll just go on the other side of the tomato grade. I said, because yeah. we're waiting for the buggies, usually push the deer around. Yeah. So we get there, and I said, well, let's just split up. Like I said, it started raining pretty heavy, and I said, well, about, probably about two hours into it, I said, tell my wife, I said, you know what? It's getting too wet. It's raining too much. Let's just get out. And so, and we were in the swamp. Everybody keeps thinking we're in the water. We were not in the water. Right. We weren't in the wading in the water. We... See, that's what I actually thought. Like so. So when I heard this story first, I tried to imagine how this could have happened. And the, the first thing I thought of was maybe somebody shot a deer and they they waded out in the water to grab this deer and they started dragging it back to shore and then this gator you know, caught scent of this deer and started following them and maybe they tried to fight off a gator, but that's not at all what happened, no, right? So, not even close. Yeah. And it was, ground was just like this, I kid you not. And there's some palmetto bushes and you got your cypress trees. And I told her, well, we'll just go up on the bank, let's turn around and go back the other way. So I had no more said that, look back to my wife. And I came around the pile of bush and it felt like I stepped right into electrical outlet, like a power line. What the heck is a friggin' power line doing out here? And I screamed and I looked down and here's this gator and he actually has my, th these kind of boots, same boots, down his throat. Like it, the whole, like leg whole was, foot was, was in his throat. Like down his throat? Yes. Holy. And cause when I went to mid, I guess when I went to mid step, he came out and he's right there. So what happened was with that electrical shock, he severed all the nerve endings in my leg. And he took me up here with four teeth. Then on the bottom, he's cramped and ripped off half my calf. Wow. Well, at the time, I didn't know what happened. I know he was bad. And I, when I was getting over the shock, I'm screaming because he's cr crushing more and more and more at the time. And he just wasn't wasn't like go and I said Jesus you know I grabbed my gun I was going to turn the gun around and I had the 12 gauge yeah and he was thrashing me around thrashing me around I said like, if I shoot I'm gonna blow my leg off and then so I turned the gun around I started smacking him right in the face hard as I could the butt again just wham wham she don't understand what's going on I tell her just stay back because at first I thought I may have stepped in the nest of him and I'm beating this alligator, beating him, beating him, beating him, and he finally let go. And I was like, ah, a break, you know? And, and I went to get up, and he came back and grabbed me again on the bottom of my boot. Then he started really pulling. And I was like, so, right. so did he, when you like, when he let go, did he back up at all? He just came right back and grabbed again, and he started dragging me. And he started dragging me towards the edge, like this edge, like that, like into the bushes. And I was like, that's it. I'm gonna blow him away. Not gonna do this. This I don't care if it takes my leg off. And that's the only day I didn't carry a pistol on me. Turn the gun around, and I'm just leaning one arm, and I'm ready to shoot. And he just lets go. Just lets go. And I, now I'm assessing the damage, and there's just blood just shooting all out of my leg. So I rip off my belt, and I'm tying it. She still don't know what's going on. I'm tying it tight, and I said, "Get over here." And I said, give me your bell. And she's like, oh, panic. 
I just want to ask. Yeah. Because you're pointing at your leg and you're showing spots on your leg that are up here. Like, how big was the skater? Ten foot. That, a ten foot. Ten foot. A ten footer, which, I mean, we talk about gators that are much bigger than ten feet. We talk about 11, 12, 13 footers. A ten foot gator had your leg I to halfway the, up your thigh. I can show you if you want to see the marks. Oh, I believe you. I don't. I, I mean, mean, straight. I, I mean, mean, hell, if you want to show them. I don't like, mind. That way everybody can see it. I'm not bullshitting. No, I'll. And how long ago was this? Back in November 9th. So day. this wasn't even that long ago. No. And up here, they're starting to heal pretty good, but they were down in my leg pretty deep. So you can see that. Oh, there's a gnarly scar right there. That tooth went right straight through the back of my leg back here. And it, and these were a lot longer, of course. See, they wow. healed, but there's the teeth. And you can see where you have my whole freaking leg. Down yeah. there, and wow. this was laid right open. So this is a ten foot gator yep. got you all the way up, halfway yep. up your thigh. Yes. That's... Now that you mention it, I just realized this was the same day. I remember reading about this in my tree stand, the day that I shot this buck that we were just eating today. Well, yeah, I guess you came out of the good. I guess that was good luck for you. Yeah, I, I think I had a better day than yeah, you did. I yeah. guess so. If you guys are curious how big a 10 foot gator is, uh, we actually have a video up uh, and you click right here, uh, see a video of one of the gators that we hunted this season that was a nine and a half footer, which is significantly smaller than a 10 footer. And remember they get, they get exponentially bigger once they get past like eight feet. So a 10 foot gator is quite a bit heavier than a nine, nine and a half footer. I told her, call 911. I said, it's bad, call him. Of course. There's no signal. I said, we got to get out of here. Yeah. I said, that is my number one. I said, no, nah, I'm going to bleed dead. I just, it, these belts are not going to hold. I yeah. Mean, I've been hunting long enough to know, and you don't have much time. And I said, they'll never find us anyway. I said, so. Hey, you're out in the middle of nowhere. Right. So she's trying, trying, she's crying, and screaming, and I was like, let's move. So what did the, like, after the gator let go, did he stay nearby or did he just take off after that? He went down over the bank and I seen him, last time I seen him, he was just still watching. Just kind of watching. But was I happening. was so focused on my leg, not, I didn't know if he broke it. Yeah. Because it's, you gotta understand, my whole leg's numb now. Yeah. He severed those nerves. I couldn't tell. So now you still have feeling in your leg? I got feeling in my leg, but it lost some in the toes here. Yeah. And of course the hair is pretty much, yeah, that, that's pretty much it on that. Yeah. Um, I wasn't going to go back the way I came because there's way too much brush. I know she's would have a hard time getting out, and I want to be found just in case I did die. In case yeah. I did bleed death. I want her to get out. So she's trying. She finally gets somebody after 30 minutes. Finally. Yeah, hello, it's 911. I hear her talking, and she's trying to explain where we're at. And to explain that, it's it's yeah. insane. So I said, well, when we get to this knoll, it's a little open. And like this here, maybe like this area. I said, I'm gonna have to lay down. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much done. And she's on the phone, like I said, and they're trying to ping her and ping me. And I said, forget it. They're not gonna get us, because then she'd probably get a hold of one lace. Well, there's no trail through it. Well, of course they're not going to know that. They're 911 dispatchers. They yeah. don't know that. They um, only know the main grades at yeah. best. And yeah. the problem is no one knows how. And people get hurt in Corbett. There's not a lot of people, a lot of paramedics are they're not their fault. To come out Willing here. or yeah. even know how yeah. to get in there. Of course. And, and I don't I don't blame them. Because if you're unfamiliar with this area, you know, this is it. we got snakes. we got gators. Oh, yeah. that, that's the way it is. I mean, I hunt out here all the time. And... If you don't know where you're going and you don't have the right vehicle to do it, you're, you're not gonna come out without help. You know? Exactly. Yeah. They finally ping my phone. Then they set the choppers up. So, all right, we're just sending you help. Now, this is like 10 o'clock when this happened. Now we're looking at 11.30 and I'm still bleeding out. About 11.30, quarter to 12, we hear the chopper. And they're way the hell off. I said, I said, dang, I said, there's no way. 
She's still on the phone, 911, and it's dropping, come back, dropping, come back, drop, come back. It's probably about 20 times, at least. Wow. If she didn't keep on the phone with them, I know I probably wouldn't have made it out. And it was getting dire as it went. Well, they didn't have a basket in anyway to get me out there one, too. They are just flying around, they can't see. Yeah. Just, we were so, wearing camo. Yeah, and well, we had the orange on, too, because the hunting Oh, was yeah. Here. And it's, she's it's waving, I'm season. waving. I said, Forget it. I said, let's try it again. And then I started passing out. I said, well, take my boot off. And she took my boot off and blood just went, I mean, everywhere. Because it, it filled up my freaking boot. I said, step on my leg and pull the damn belt hard as you can. Just just wrench. And yeah. I went out, come back and in and out of consciousness. And then I remember waking up. And she's asking the 911 offer, should I shoot rounds? In three rounds. Because that's supposed to be cool about the call. He goes, well, no, 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 don't shoot. You hit them. I said, fire on the ground. Yeah, for sure. So she fired in the ground. And then you see the co the chopper coming back over. And then he finally sees us. So it's been two hours since you got yes, this. Yes, two hours. She so started yelling, screaming. Yelling, screaming off. And then you see the helicopter leave. What the hell is going on? And they're hovering over there. All of a sudden, you hear the swamp buggies come. And it was the McCullum family. And if they didn't hear her scream, or if they decided, you know, hey, the hell with it, you know, they, they would, I would never get out. Yeah. They got me out, as far as I'm concerned, on that part. They pulled up. I remember just waking up and seeing this guy jump off a buggy with, come on, what happened? My wife tells him, he got bit by a gator. He goes back to his buggy and gets a zip tie, AC zip tie. Takes the belts off and just, and then I was going in shock. And then he grabs some jackets, put it on me, and they picked me out, put me on the buggies. And they followed the helicopter where the helicopter could take me out. Man. And they flew me from there to uh, St. Mary's. And times I get in surgery is like one o'clock. I've had people say, well, what were you doing? You, you teasing the gator? I mean, were you, were you feeding? I've had people say, do you feed the gator? I go, well, you out of your mind? Well, you must have been out there hunting gators. I said, are you? It's just on and on. They want to blame the person all the time. And yeah. I say, well, it is his territory. I get it. Yeah. But it wasn't an act of stupidness. Yeah. That's why I wanted to make sure people didn't. It wasn't. It was just wrong time, wrong place. Right. And it happened. But people don't realize how quick it could happen to you. Well, and I think you know? uh, an important part of it is that you were walking on dry land in the middle of palmettos walking by and all of a sudden you had a gator on your leg right you know it's not like you were walking through a swamp um you know where you might expect a gator clearly you you weren't doing anything to provoke this gator and the fact that it let go and then came back right and bit you again like was probably an act of aggression or territorial it could have been issues. i mean who knows? for all you know there might he she might have had a nest nearby and she was defending it you don't know but the fact is you weren't out there taunting this gator you were not looking for this kind of trouble you were out there just trying to hunt deer and uh and you know came across this gator and like you said wrong place wrong time right and this can happen when you get bit by a gator you know you just you either use your limb <laughs> you know you lose a limb or something i yeah, just lucked like, out nothing, yeah i mean i consider you a lucky man to be sitting here telling your story right now. And they just go to show people, you know, they always ask, how'd you survive it? Yeah. I'll tell you how I survived. Keep my head and keep focused. The focus was get the hell out of there. That's the focus, get yeah. out. And um, I, that that's all the truth of the story is. But I think, I think what's really important to note here is that you got bit by a gator, what, three months ago? Yeah, November 9th, yeah. This man was back out here hunting again today. Yep. And I think that just goes to show that this is just a part of the life that we live like we choose to be hunters we choose to be out there uh doing what we love and we accept that we are in their territory exactly and when 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 shit goes wrong it's because we put ourselves in their territory and uh i think that's important to know it is and i, I love it so much yeah. two weeks later i was out there and i dropped the dough yeah. So it was two weeks, I was out there. My kids brought me out there in a chair. Two weeks later. Two weeks later, I had a deer. Two weeks later, this man was out there hunting again. Yep. That's awesome. 
thanks for telling your oh, story, man. Thank I, you. I, I really appreciate it. you uh, you telling that story. And if anybody has any questions, make sure you drop a comment down below, um, and uh, we'll be sure to check in with him. And uh, if, if there are any specific questions towards him, we'll uh, we'll see if he can give an answer or anything like that. Um, and with that, uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in and make sure that you subscribe to our channel by clicking right down here somewhere or click over here to watch some of our other videos. Thank you guys. Have a good one.